students welcome to the science class in today's session we are going to study a new chapter separation of substances the heading of the chapter itself says the separation what we are going to study here is the separation of the materials so see now we are i am going to tell what are the things we are going to study under the chapter of separation of substances in today's session we are going to discuss the methods of separation that are nothing but hand picking what is meant by the hand picking threshing winnowing sieving and what is meant by the sedimentation decantation filtration and also we are going to discuss what is meant by the evaporation process and a condensation process and also we discuss what is meant by the solutions and what is meant by the saturated solutions here so in our daily life we are going to we used to make sub, separate the some of the material some of the substances from the materials for example when our day starts with drinking of tea isn't it so before drinking the tea before we are going to take the tea we are going to separate the tea powder or the tea leaves from the tea isn't it by using by we are going to separate that tea, uh, tea that we are going to separate the tea powder from the tea isn't it so and also we are going to separate some of the waste materials from the grains for example observe if a mother if the, if she is cooking before she is going to start to cooking she used to separate some of the stones which are present in the grains by spreading in the by, by spreading in the sheet or spreading in the any material isn't it and so if i am going to tell you that is nothing but we use some of the separation methods here we are going to separate that materials from that the uh, food material which why because these are uh, that that are the waste materials which are present in the usable materials and it is very easy to separate that that material from the, the it is very use uh, it is very easy to separate the tea powder from the tea and i am giving one example here if i am going to give you the goa mangoes goa mangoes and small mangoes are mangoes mangoes and goa mangoes so goas if i am going to tell you separate that mangoes it is very easy to separate isn't it because they are very big in size we can easily separate by separating by the size and also by taking by the hand isn't it if i am going to give the mixture of soil and a salt i am going to mix some amount of the soil with the salt and if i say to separate the salt from the soil is it very easy to separate it is not imagine it is no, it is not imaginable here because it is not easy to separate the salt from the soil because they are very small particles we can can't pick that small particles from the hand and these are number of particles are present it is way it takes a very long time to separate here and it is too difficult work here but if we need to separate that salt from the soil it is possible to separate the salt from the soil in a very easy way so which is the way we are going to use which is the method we are going to use to separate that salt from the soil that will be studied under the methods of separation here first i am considering hand picking see if imagine that you are going to a market to buy some of the grains or some of the food materials like rice or the grains so if you are going to buy the grains from the market you have to remember here the grains are not they are not pure here some of the dust particles like uh, stalks of the grains and uh, small pieces of the sticks and the small stones which are present in that grains but it is very need to separate them isn't it so how we are going to separate them so we can take that grains into a paper or into any material and we can spread it isn't it our mother also going to be spread it and sp spread that grains on a sheet and by hand picking we are going to hand pick that 
uh, stones which are present in the grains isn't it we are going to separate the grains from the waste materials like the stones and the stalks which are present in the grains so this is all the process of separation of the waste materials like the stones and the stalks from the grains by picking by picking with the help of the hand we are going to easily pick the stones which are present in the grains so if you are going to make the rice here the rice has the sum of the small sto stones we are going to spread the rice into into a sheet or into any material and we can pick with the, our hand isn't it so this is all the process the process of separation of them with waste material that is nothing but the stone stars which are present in the rice from by the help of the hand by the picking with the hand and this process it is called it as a hand picking so what is hand picking here the separation of the waste material from the usable material with, with the help of hand with the picking with the help of the hand then this process it is called it as a hand picking here we are going to separate the waste materials like a stone stalks of the grains which are present in the rice or which are present in the grain with the help of our hand by 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 picking the waste materials from the grains that process it is called it as a hand picking so why we are going to make here because we are going to separate the waste material from the usable material here the grains are the usable material and the the why we are going to separate here because to separate the waste material that is the stones and the stalks which are present in the grain we are going to throw away that uh, waste materials which are present in the grain and we have to utilize only pure materials so we have to use the separation methods here and also uh, next another one example i another one example i am taking here so i am taking the grains here isn't it so the where the grains are present the grains in which in 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 where we are going to get that grains from which we are going to get the grains the grains are present in that the field are the in the plants they are present in the field isn't it if you are going to see in the field that grains are present in the stalks and that stalks are bundled by the farmer and they are going to put that bundle into the field before they are going to pu purified or before they are going to uh, separated from the stalks before the grains which present in the stalks before separating from the stalks they are present attached with the stalks or they are present attached with the stalks here isn't it or uh, so after the cultivation the farmer it is used to cut the crops isn't it he used to cut the crops and he make the bundles of the crops isn't it he make the sum of the bundles of the crops and after onwards the farmer is used to separate the grains from that crops isn't it but how he was going to separate that uh, uh, grains from the crops if i am going to give you one activity here separate the mangoes or fruits from the stalks of their plants it is very easy to separate the stalks stalks means see here if you are considering any fruit here any fruit here this part it is called it as a stalk i am considering it is if it is an orange orange fruit so this part this part it is called it as a stalk isn't it so it is very easy to separate the stalk from the fruit isn't it so like that every grain wheat grain rice grain every grain has its stalk if you are considering this is a wheat these are all are the stalks stalks these stalks are not usable material here it is very need to separate the stalks from the grain but in the case of the orange the stalk is very big and the number of the oranges present in a plant is very few so it is very easy to separate the stalk from the orange plant but if you are going to separate the stalk from the grains like a wheat rice so uh, it the stalks are very high here because the number of grains which are present in one bunch of the grain it is very high and it is very difficult to separate the stalk by the hand 
but how the farmer is going to be separate the stock from these grains how the farmer is going to separate the grains from the stock so after cutting of the uh, that plants in the field farmer used to uh, used to keep that cut plants or the cut uh, cut uh, field that is uh, yield which is comes from the plant into the sunlight for drying after the drying he used to hit he used to beat that into any area in the land so what happens here the stalks which is attached to the grains are going to be broken down and the grains are separated here he used to beat isn't it he used to beat towards the land and he, he spread a sheet in the land and he used to beat it isn't it so the process of separation of stalks or the process of separation of the grains by the stalks is known as threshing here what is threshing the separation of the grains from the stalk that is known as the threshing it is utilized by the farmer here next when the farmer will separate it, these the grain so in our days the threshing will be it is will be done by the machines also and also the farmer is yeah, going to use the bullocks all bulls and uh, other animals to thresh that the stocks which are present in the grains using the animals he used to uh, make threshing here and after the threshing the grains still they are not pure here the sum of the star materials which are mixed up with the grain here and also some of the sticks and some of the lighter dust particles of the plants like some of the powdered leaves of the plants which are also present with the grains here but how we are going to separate the grains we get the pure grain here so how we are going to separate if you are going to see uh, in the villages uh, at the time of uh, at the time of the uh, uh, what we are going to say separation of the grains from the yield so farmer used used to throw or used to slide he used to make you are going to see here farmer seated on a bench here and he used to fall that grains which are present in that container into opposite to the air what happens here what is the method he was using that is winnowing what happens here if the grains contains a lighter particle or a lighter dust particle he used to throw that uh, lighter that grains which contains the lighter particles towards the land what happens the air will be blows here so one example one activity i am taking here S take some grains mix that so you have to mix up that grains with the powdered leaves powder you have to take the dried leaves and make it the powder and mix that powder uh, leaf powder into the grain and you have to take into the ground and stand on a higher area you have to remember and take that container which contains that the dust materials called leaf powder and grain and you have to you have to handle you have to you have to handle that container in a such a way that it, it will be present equal to your shoulder height and you have to just tilt that container in a such a way that the grains which are present in the container they are just to fall down and you have to observe here the grains are heavier material when you are going to make this activity the grains are fallen straightly into the ground and the lighter particles like the leaf powder will blow away will blow away away from the grains isn't it why because air carries that dust particles the air moves the air carries that dust particles up away from that grains isn't it so by the help of this method the farmers are going to separate the grains from the waste materials like the stalks and the some of the powder leaf which is present in the grain so this method of separation of waste material the waste materials it is nothing but here the stalk and the powdered leaf isn't it this is the waste material because it is not usable here so this process of separation of waste materials which is present in the grains it is nothing but we knowing here the the separation of the separation of the grains by its waste from its waste are the separation of the waste materials which are present in the grain with the help of the air is known as winnowing and 
next i am considering another one method of separation here that is nothing but sieving see here when your mother is going to do any food material if if your mother going to do chapati so what she take first she going to take the wheat atta here isn't it what she makes here what she going to do you have to clearly observe she take that atta into the sieve why because that atta also contains some of the impurity some of the dust particles so it, it, it should be removed from that atta so she used to remove that waste particle from the atta by using the sieve here she, she used to put that materials into the sieve and by sieving the, the atta will be removed the atta will be placed in downwards any in any container and but the impurities are removed in the sieve in the sieve so the process, process of separation of these small particles from the atta that is known as the sieving here the process of separation of the waste particles from the atta with the help of the sieve that is known as sieving so it is under one method of separation which we are going to use in our daily life so this these are the simple methods which we are going to use to separate some of the materials which are present in a usable materials are this are the simple methods simple types we are going to separate the waste materials which are present in the usable materials if i am taking you one example here so you have to take the some soil about 10 gram of soil and mix with the salt and mix with the salt and you have to separate it or if you are going to separate the rice from the dust particles what you are going to do here so rice particles also has some of the lighter particle lighter dust particle what your mother going to do here your mother going to wash the rice with the water what what she is going to do she takes some of the rice into any container she used to pour water into it after some times what happens the water carries the lighter dust particles which are present in the rice and that will becomes at the upper part isn't it so what is sedimentation here when you are going to pour the water into any material the rice is here it, it the rice is the heavy particle here and it will be collected at the downward down at the it is collected at the downside of the any container isn't it and the lighter dust particles are carried away by the water at the upper layer isn't it by tilting it slowly that water carries all the dust particles and the pure rice will be settled down isn't it so the when you are going to pour water into any material the heavier material will be settled down here so the settling down of the any material when we are going to pour water into it and this process it is called it as a sedimentation what is sedimentation the process of settling down of the heavier material when you are going to pour the water into the container which is containing rice that rice particles will be settled down at the bottom isn't it so the settling down of the heavier material when we are going to pour the water into it and this process it is called it as a sedimentation so here once one separation will be comes here so the lighter particles will be present at the upper surface of the water that will be carried by the water and the pure rice will be collected down settled down at the bottom of the container so it is one type of the separation method here that is nothing but the sedimentation so after that your mother try to remove that lighter waste by by separating the water present at the upper part isn't it she, she used to tilt slightly to separate the the water which contains the waste material and that water will be collected into another container and through that water the lighter waste particles will be separated from the rice so this process the process of separation of the lighter waste particles from with the help of the water by tilting it that this process it is called it as a decantation you have to remember the process of separation of waste lighter waste particles with the help of the water that is known as 
decantation isn't it and so he uh, another one example for the decantation here if you are going to mix water with any oil so take a container mix the some amount of the water with the oil what happens here oil it is not mixed with the water because these are two are immiscible liquids they, these are completely not mixed with each other so you have to keep that glass for a few minutes for undisturbed you have to uh, kept that glass undisturbedly for a few minutes so what happens here the two layers are present water will be present at the bottom level and the oil will be present at the uh, above the water level so by tilting slightly you can collect you can separate the oil which is present in the water isn't it by separation of by the process of separation of this method it is called it as a decantation here is it clear so next another one method i am considering here you are going to separate the tea powder when you are going used to drink the tea isn't it with the help of what you are going to use here we normally used to separate the tea powder when we are going to drink a tea isn't it because tea powder it is not essential it is a not essential material in the tea it will be it the tea powder has the sum of the waste material and also it is a waste material we can separate from the tea by using stainer here isn't it so sometimes we are going to separate the waste materials from some of the liquids for example if you are going to separate if you are going to separate any waste materials which is present in the milk you are going to use the stainer so the process of separation of waste materials which is present in the any liquid with the help of the stainer that is called it as a filtration here so the process of separation of the waste materials from any liquids with the help of the stainer that is called it as a filtration you have to remember in your examination two to three marks question should be asked on this what is filtration they ask any definition here what is hand picking what is threshing what is winnowing what is sieving what is sieving here the separation of waste materials from the usable materials with the help of the sieve that is known as sieving isn't it like that filtra filtration what is filtration the process of separation of the waste materials from the liquids with the help of the stainer it is known as filtration is it clear but sometimes the filtration with the help of the stainer the we, we doesn't get pure material here for example if you are going to take the mixture of water and the soil water and soil if you are going to separate that uh, soil from the water it is not completely done here why because the stainer has the big holes here isn't it from that holes the small soil particles will be mixed up with the water that can be carried uh, continuously after onwards also filtration but in this process we can use the filter paper the filter paper which is present in the labs so it is it has a small pores with the help of that filter filter paper we can easily filter the uh, we can easily filter the soil which is present in the water isn't it how we are going to use that filter paper normally filter paper it is in the circular shape and you have to so it is in the circular shape you have to put that so that filter paper into the into the uh, so uh, any conical flask you have to remember you have to insert that filter paper into the conical flask in a such a way that you have to make it as an a cone you have to make it as an a cone you have to fold like that see here you have to fold like this type and you have to make just like a cone and you have to insert this filter paper into a conical flask and after onwards you have to pour the mixture here so the filter paper has a very small small pores and holes holes pores means holes through that holes the 
the solution will be or the materials will be separated if the if you are going to use here one example that is the water containing soil all the soil particles are collected here and the water will be collected drop by drop into the conical flask so it is another one type of the separation here separation method here that is nothing but the filtration isn't it so sometimes it is the one method it is not used for the separation of the materials which is present in the usable materials we have to use number of or a combination of separation methods to separate the dust particles which are present in the usable materials for example i am considering here mixture of salt mixture of salt with the soil mixture of salt with the soil in this process we can't separate the soil uh, separate the soil or the salt in a one step or a, by using one method here we are going to use combination of methods for example it is it is not easy to separate the salt from the soil here but how we are going to easily separate here so now you have to pour that the mixture of salt and what salt and soil into the water you have to pour that mixture of salt and soil pour into the water and you have to stir it continuously what happens here after time sometimes the salt will completely the salt will completely mix up with the water isn't it but soil is doesn't mix with the water here so after onwards you have to keep that solution containing soil salt and water undisturbed for few minutes what happened here the soil particles which are present in the water will be settled down isn't it will be settled down so the settled down the settled down of the waste materials which are present in the usable substance that is known as the sedimentation here you use first step sedimentation the dust particles or the soil particle will be what happens here the soil particles will be settled down at the bottom of the container after few minutes by tilting slowly the water will be removed and the soil particles will be completely removed or separated with the help of the sedimentation process and by removal of water from the upper layer of the soil isn't it by tilting slowly and this process it is called it as decantation we use first sedimentation here and after onwards decantation the water which the salt is completely dissolved here so when you are going to mix the mix mi mixture of soil and salt into the water the salt completely dissolved into the water and when you are going to left undisturbed that solution all the soil particles will be settled down and that will be separated by the help of the sediment sedimentation process after onwards the mixture of salt and water will be separated with the help of the decantation process now you have to see here when you are going to see the water they we can't see the salt here why because the salt is completely dissolved but how we are going to separate that salt how we are going to separate that salt if, if, now you have to take that mixture of salt and water that is salt solution into another one container and you have to boil it you have to boil it completely until the all amount of the water will vaporize and go away what happens here when you are going to boil the solution of water and salt after boiling the water molecules completely evaporated due to the heat and the salt which is dissolved in the water will be collected at the at the at the bottom of the container so the process of conversion of water into its vapor that is called it as evaporation the process of conversion of water into its vapor that is called it as evaporation what we did here so we have to what is the need to uh, evaporate the water here because 
the salt is dissolved in the water here so we have to remove we have to get the salt from the water so we can boil the water here due to the boiling process the water will be evaporated so the process of conversion of water into its vapor it is called as evaporation after complete evaporation of the water the salt which is dissolved in the water will be collected down and you have to remember the same amount of the salt will not be present here because some of the salt will dissolve in the water will be used by the water and that also will be evaporated so we get again salt by the mixture of the soil and salt with the help of four separation methods that is nothing but sedimentation decantation filtration and evaporation isn't it we are going to get we are going to separate the salt from the mixture of mixture of salt and soil by using different separation methods that is sedimentation decantation and evaporation so when you are going to evaporate the water when you are going to evaporate the water so the water vapors are goes away from the container in that time you have to place a plate you have to place a plate or hold a plate and place some ice cubes on it what happens here the evaporated vapor, water vapors will converted into a water drops isn't it you can easily see here but and also in another cases when you are going to boil the milk so if you if you cover the uh, that container when you are going to boil the milk the if you are cover the container with any plate after some times you can see small drops are attached to the that covering plate so where does it come from what are those how they are come here because the water which is present in the milk and evaporated and due to the cold condition that evaporated will be condensed and con and that will be evaporated water molecules will be converted into water droplets here so what happens when you are going to place the ice cubes on the plate and the when the evaporated water molecules comes towards the place that will be cooled due to the ice cube which are, which is present at that uh, uh, which is ice cubes are present at the upper side of the plate and that will cools the water vapors here and the water vapors will converted into droplets and the process of conversion of water vapors into water drops that is known as condensation here the process of conversion of water vapors into the water drops that is known as condensation process and it is also another one process type of the process it is also another one type of the method which is used to separate some of the waste materials here so we get the distilled water we you are know in the uh, in the uh, hospitals they are going to use the distilled water to inject so that distilled water how we are going to get by the condensation process by boiling the water and by condensing the water vapors we get pure distilled water so this condensation it is also another one type of the separation method which we are going to use so in last case the salt will be mixed with the water the salt will be mixed with the water i am taking another one example here take 100 ml of water and pour 10 gram of the sugar and stir it well is it the sugar particles can be seen now no we are not going to see any sugar particles but where they are goes but they completely dissolve in it so that mixture of that sugar and the water the mixture of sugar and the water are homogeneous mixture of sugar and water that is called it as the solution so what is meant by the solution here solution it is nothing but it is a homogeneous mixture of two or more components so in the one example i am taking sugar solution here sugar solution contains sugar and water sugar it is completely dissolved in water the homogeneous mixture of two or more components that is known as solution and one example here sugar solution and you can take salt solution also take 100 ml of water add 10 g of the salt into it 
and uh, stir it for some times after onwards you, is it the salt particles can be seen no the salt particles are not present in the water here why because they are completely dissolved in the water so then we are going to call it as an salt solution so what is meant by the solution here it is a homogeneous mixture of homogeneous mixture of two or more components if the particles can be seen by our eyes if the particles are not dissolved in that solution then that solution it is not called it as a solution that is called it as a mixture and it is a heterogeneous mixture you have to remember this point here so solution it is a homogeneous mixture when we are going to call it as a homogeneous the materials which we are going to pour it will be completely dissolved in that then only we are going to call it as a solution so in the solution the material which dissolves another one material that is called it as a solvent you have to remember the material the water i am taking here is a material which dissolved salt so water is a solvent water is a solvent and a salt is a solute here in a solution the material which dissolves other material that is called it as a solvent and the material which dissolved in the solvent it is called it as a salt in the example water is the solvent and salt is a solute here so this is is this is about what is meant by the solution i am taking one example here the sol when you are going to make the sugar solution you take 100 ml of water and 10 g of the sugar will be added to it and stir it well the sugar will completely dissolve here next we have to take again 10 g of the sugar and pour into that sugar solution again stir it well so after few minutes again that sugar will be completely dissolved again you have to take the 10 g of the sugar again you have to pour into that sugar solution again try to stir it again you can get here that that 10 g of the sugar will be completely dissolved in the water but if you are go continuously add that sugar into that sugar solution at one and what happens the solution doesn't the sugar is will doesn't completely dissolve in the water why it is completely dissolved in the water why because at that stage the stage which the solution doesn't dissolves any more amount of the sugar then that solution it is called it as a saturated solution you have to remember when you are go on adding the solute into the solvent at one stage the solvent doesn't dissolve dissolves the solute particles and that stage it is called it as the saturated solution and now you have to take that saturated solution and boil for 5 to 4 minutes and after onwards you have to add some of amount of the sugar and try to dissolve it as yes, we can possible we, it is possible to dissolve, dissolve that material into that solution again for about the some amount only Uh, by boiling a saturated solution we can dissolve some more amount of the solute particle here but what is a saturated solution here it is a stage at which the solvent i am taking one example sugar solution in a sugar solution water is a solvent then uh, sugar is a solute if you are go on adding solute into the solvent at one stage the solvent doesn't dissolves the sugar doesn't dissolve the solute and that time that solution it is called it as a saturated solution so it is all about so what is meant by the solution and what is meant by the saturated solution so it is very essential to separate the some of the waste materials from our food products so we have learned some of the different types of the separation methods in today's sessions uh, so some of the different methods of the separations we studied why because it is very need to separate the weight waste materials from the usable material so and this completes your another one important lesson that is the separation of separation of substances in next session we are going to continue your another one new lesson thank you